everybody. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at women in the 1920s, and we're going to be assessing how far their lives were impacted, whether all women's lives were impacted or whether it was just some. Um, how they were liberated in the 1920s kind of would just discuss briefly how the war had an impact on women's lives in the 1920s. And um, just to, again, we'll look at the inequalities because we'll see that not everything changed for all women. Okay, so let's get going on that then. Oh. Okay, so how did life for women change? So the changing role of women was a result of the work they did during the war. So we do see a lot of change happen post-war. War causes obviously change at the time for a lot of groups in society but also has a lasting effect for a lot of groups mm -hmm. as well because their role and their um lifestyle changes during the war a lot of people want that to carry on or don't want that to carry on after the war so it was a result of the work they did during the war the number of working women increased by 25 percent so in 1920 in america all women were given the right to vote and that's really important so their status their sort of worth has increased in society and their opinions they no longer need a man to tell them how um or to represent them in the voting system they've got their own voice so flappers which we'll have a look at smoked in public they danced the new dances which we talked about in the last video the charleston the one step and they were sexually liberated and we'll see that in the clothes that they were wearing and the lives that they had Women wore clothing more convenient for activity and stopped wearing long skirts and corsets. So we do see women, and this is partly because of the war work in World War One. women, it was dangerous for women to wear long skirts. So some of them did start to wear trousers and then that did convert into their day-to-day -day wear. Um, and then they also wore short, not short by today's standards, but shorter dresses when we consider that women were used to wearing these long corsets with all these layers um, they were no longer wearing those in public they would wear the shorter skirts with the frills on the bottom again i will show you some pictures but if you want to google or youtube what a charleston dance is you'll be able to see what the women were wearing when they went out dancing now divorce made it easier for women and the number of divorces doubled now that's a good thing to remember and have up your sleeve for the exam women were not content just to stay at home and put up with bad husbands so i could talk on and on and on about um what marriage traditionally meant and how that changed in the 1920s and then after um the war women were not free to make their own choices until divorce was uh, made easier because they were owned by their husbands okay and they had to do what their husband said they didn't have the chance to go and sort of make a life for themselves they couldn't go out and work if their husband didn't want them to and so on some women obviously were happily married and that was absolutely fine but for those who weren't and for those who were abused it was now easier for them to come out of those relationships and go on and um, with their lives <clears throat> so again we've talked about how not everything is all the same for everyone in the 1920s most women were still housewives and were not as free as their male counterparts. So it doesn't change for everybody. And again, we're going to see that it is mainly the upper classes where we have that difference. So again, we're going to look at some sources and we're going to infer a few things from these sources. So number one, though a few middle class women in the cities talked about, oh, let's just middle class, talked about throwing off the older conventions, they were the flappers most women took to, stuck to more traditional attitudes concerns concerning their place most middle class women concentrated on managing the home so that's what they would traditionally do their daughters far from taking to the streets against sexual discrimination were more likely to prepare for careers as mothers and housewives millions of immigrant women and their daughters also clung to traditions that placed men firmly in control of the family OK, now there's I'm not going to write down here because I just don't have time if we're going to go through these sources, but please feel free to pause the video at any point and write down what you've gained from these sources before I go on to um, explain just to get your, your brain thinking there. <clears throat> so 
some we've got a few right a few middle class women did want to what to um throw off the older conventions most of them actually were comfortable with their place and that was this was something that we if you have studied the suffragettes in britain in the 1910s uh, this is something that is a quite a big misconception is that all women wanted things to change all women wanted the vote all women wanted to be able to work that's simply not true a lot of women maybe because they felt safe they felt comfortable it was all they'd ever known but a lot of women were, were happy with where they were um and they didn't want things to change and that's what we can see in this source we can see that a lot of women just carried on life stayed as it was in the 1920s but they might have more access to consumer goods but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going out in short skirts and they're dancing all night okay james a flapper let us take a look at the young person as she strolls along the lawn of her parents suburban home having just put the car away after driving so this is quite a new thing that women are driving and um therefore have a lot more independence 60 miles in two hours she is for one thing a pretty girl beauty is the fashion in 1925 she is frankly heavily made up so she's got a lot of makeup on with poisonously scarlet lips and richly ringed eyes so she's got lipstick and eyeliner on as for her clothes jane isn't wearing much this summer her dress is brief it is cut low so she's got some cleavage. The skirt comes just below the knees. Now, to us, that's not short, but that is very short in those times. The bra has been abandoned since 1924, and that's a sign of, of liberation. Um, so what we can learn from here is that these, these women who are embracing this new life, this new custom, are going very far. So if you compare a picture of a woman in the 1910s or the 1800s and compare it to a flapper, they're completely different. And this just shows you how women are being liberated because they're not being confined and literally confined and restricted by corsets anymore. They're setting their bodies free and therefore their minds and their actions. Okay, so this is an advert for um, a magazine in the 1920s. So we can see how these women in here are still quite conservatively dressed and they are um, being sold an electric washer. Okay, so we can see that we know that the woman's job, they're still in the home and they're still concerned with um, domestic duties. However, these are being made easier because they have access to these kinds of products, um, which makes their housework easier. And if they have got access to these kinds of products, we know, I don't know why I keep sleeping in our heads, they've got, oh, oh, sorry, I think I've, it's just crashed. Let's get that back up. Okay, so we know that if they have got um, access to these products, that they are more wealthy. So they their lives have developed, but maybe them and their roles in it have stayed quite similar. Okay, so number four, think of the modern young American girl in every town and city of this great country. She is the loveliest physical creature. Imagine something like this being written today. She is the loveliest physical creature since the age of the Greeks and has the brightest mentality if only it were used. Now, this is quite um, an interesting one, this one. Do they ever think, these beautiful young girls? It would seem not. Their aim appears to be to allure men and to secure money. What can a man with a mind find to hold him? It, sorry, what can a man with a mind find to hold him in one of these lovely, brainless, unbalanced, cigarette smoking morsels of undisciplined sex? whom he meets continually. Has the American girl no modesty, no self-respect, no reserve and no dignity? Now, oh, that, <laughs> that, it's written by a female journalist, in English journalist in 1921. So 
I think this shows you how maybe um, America might be more advanced in their attitude towards women. Because that, that saying that women, women attracting men and women wanting certain things and presenting themselves in a certain way is all for these men and these poor men to have to put up with these women. And that's just such an old fashioned value, isn't it? And that's exactly what we're seeing here that the attitude of these flappers in America and that sort of becoming normalized there for them to be behave in this way because they are li liberated and because that's how they choose to live their lives is not yet there in, in Britain, okay? So that's an interesting one for you to have a think about. I could talk about that all day. Okay, I think I've just got time for, yeah, for a couple more. So I'll, I want you to listen to this song. Um, so you, again, go on YouTube and type in all that jazz from Chicago. Um, I'll, I'll talk through it a little bit because I do love this song and the lyrics. So why don't we paint the town and all that jazz, right? So this is, Chicago is um, about women and have been um, convicted of murder in the 1920s in Chicago. So roll my stockings down. I start the car. I know a whoopee shot where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot, so they're dancing. It's a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl. Okay, so we could, we, we're sort of building up a picture of these women's lives in the 1920s. Slick your hair, so uh, did flappers did sometimes sort of gel their hair back and wear your buckle shoes. I hear that Father Dip is gonna blow that blues. Um, we're gonna bunny hug. I've, I bought some aspirin down at United Drug in case you shake apart and want a brand, brand new start. Um, find a flask, we're playing fast and loose and all that jazz is where I store the juice. So they're out drinking, they're attracting men. Um, uh, yeah, so they're dancing. So it's, it's just painting a picture of what they're wearing, what they're going out doing, how they're living their lives. And what we might consider at this time traditionally to be quite a manly night out. But this is the women are joining in, they're going out with the men, they're acting like the men. Um, they're not just going and dancing and sitting and having a little drink, okay? The lives are changing for these women. So here's a picture of a flapper. Now, again, not ridiculous by our standards today, nothing risque about it really, but we can see how their um, attire has changed. And again, what it costs to be a well-dressed flapper. So this is saying, the what it costs we can infer from that is that not everybody could afford to be a flapper because you needed money to be able to look like a flapper and that's really really important you don't have access to this lifestyle if you don't have the money to have access to this lifestyle and you don't have the money if you're not in a wealthy family because remember five percent of the population own a third of the wealth and if you aren't in that group and you don't have access to this you aren't liberated and you aren't going out doing these things and you aren't dressing like this because you simply can't afford to times have not changed that much where this is the norm okay and i'm going to leave it on that note um one more picture for you to have a look at so again a woman two women going out socializing in the same bar as men they've got their legs crossed they've got short skirts on they're drinking they're having a cigarette and they're having a good time and that's because they've got the money to be able to do that they may have jobs now um and they're enjoying their social time which is a new um concept again in the 1920s okay so we're going to move on now from the change in lifestyles and we're going to have a look at prohibition um and organized crimes this is a i, I remember i taught a student a few years ago where when we were doing america it was like every lesson. When are we doing Al Capone? When are we doing Al Capone? We're doing Al Capone. Okay, so please tune in for that. And uh, thank you for watching this video today.